I'm the community engagement assistant for the Lawrence Community Shelter and I manage volunteers as part of the LCS Garden Project. A lot of the work is done from volunteers in the community. The food from the garden goes directly to our kitchen and is used to prepare meals for our guests. The Tiny Home Project will be named Monarch Village, uh, inspired by our Monarch Way Station that we're working on. And that'll provide us an opportunity just to beautify the space, uh, provide some habitat for pollinators, and also have some activities where we engage our guests about being connected with nature and uh, with the environment. I was a teacher for six years um, before switching into agriculture, so it's one of my favorite things to do is to, to teach people and to pass it off because I think it's important to um, to really you know pass on any knowledge that I have about something that's so important as growing your own food to as many people as possible. I was trying to plan a lot of things that we perennial so that we would do a, a big planting of them once. The strawberries is one of the good examples of that. So I think that's also a really fun one that kids can interact with. And this year, with the pandemic, but with all the shortages, it just put us the crazy out. <laughs> the convenience factor of just being able to step outside. This whole process, even if I don't do the, the scale of this next year or ever again, just realizing that I can do a lot with just what is right outside my door. When immigrants come here, most of the time they can the food that they, they commonly eat in the grocery store. We don't think about how much of a privilege it is that I can go to the store and buy all the stuff that I commonly eat. But, you know, that's not everybody's story. And this is how they maintain connection. This is how they maintain celebration. This is how they maintain culture. But, well, Haskell has 140 different tribes here, so what they share is going to be incredible. Students can dig in the fridge, you know, when, when they were here, whenever they were hungry and studying. And then it was also dual for um, having our indigenous garden because, um, you know, there was a trend in libraries to have seed gardens or seed libraries, which we're pretty lucky, you know, we're pretty lucky to work here and have someone say, hey, come and pick some corn because you don't get the seeds anywhere, mm -hmm. you know. It's it's just from family to family. People come and offer to work and offer to help. Um, some Navajos last year that would come and um, get the squash. Last year the squash plant went all the way to cross that, that sidewalk over there. But it would remind them of home, you know. <laughs> the pandemic has changed things for everyone and so Sunrise Project is different. We've been very reliant on volunteers like Charlotte to come out and just really help keep the garden going. They're out here working the garden. They will show oh look, this is ready and we can harvest it. And so we see people coming out and just taking what they need and leaving the rest for others. All sorts of people come by here. I mean all sorts of people and in all sorts of situations. People that have lost their work and really need food and people that can't garden but they want to expose their children to gardens really promotes people wanting to give back.